Wait a minute, I gotta record. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so we are now live on Facebook on the Spiritual Neighborhood page and my page. And let me tell you guys what we're doing <laughs> or trying to do. We have pre-recorded our interview with Isaac Bradfield because he has a teaching uh, gig. He, he, he's a real person with a real job. And so we're going to play that video for y'all and we're going to throw in comments and we're watching it live with you as we play it. So we're just going to get started and keep our fingers crossed that this works. Hi, y'all. This is the Spiritual Neighborhood, and we are a grassroots community project of the Council of Families for Children, which is a 501c3 nonprofit. We do believe that sick can be fixed, so we support services that improve the quality of life for the body, mind, and spirit for the integration of a healthy, happy human. And we have returning with us one of our regular guests and one of my personal favorites, Isaac Bradfield. He is a holistic astrologer. I had to look this up. He's a hermetetic, a hermetetic educator. Which means, okay. Hermetic. How he is? Hermetic. 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 What is that exactly in, in, in one sentence? <laughs> is approaching life as though you need to incorporate different parts of things that are going on around you to arrive at a higher state spiritually at the end. So see, he, he is all about integration on every level of his life. He just fits in perfectly with what we do. He's also a gemologist. He's also a published author. He has been a professional astrologer and psychic reader for over 45 years, and his focus is on counseling the complete individual. You just heard that earlier about us. From everyday life advice to assistance with indecision, chaos, and crisis. He's a former member of the St. Petersburg Astrological Society, hosted many astrology and divination meetup groups, and he's been a regular member of the Texas Tarot podcast and as a guest speaker on many other radio and podcast episodes. Every third Thursday evening, he is a guest on Elizabeth's show, which is blogtalkradio.com. And what's the new channel station name? Naked as you or what? Well, is it? it is... <laughs> it's the the channel is make it so network but it's his actual show he actually has his show on my channel which okay. is so uh, so spiritual topaz okay see, i did not know that <laughs> spiritual topaz i love that name and so you can see that or hear that every third thursday and call in and ask questions you can reach him at Isaac Bradley. oh my god this is spiritual topaz also, not spiritual uh, topaz <laughs> What? What? What did I do? Did I screw up? Did I screw up? No. No, it's Are you spiral topaz. Spiral topaz? But mm -hmm. I said spiritual topaz? Well, that's mm -hmm. better. They should change. Yeah. They should change the name. Spiral topaz. <laughs> I still think you should change the name. <laughs> Oh my God! Look, I stopped it. Too, too much mind. spiritual going on. I don't know about you guys, but I, it, it's dragging really, really bad on my. Is on it my side. Is yeah, it dragging? Cracking. Well, it's not here, so hopefully it's not going out on Facebook. If somebody can look at the Facebook comments and ask people, is it dragging? Because remember, this is an experiment for us, so, you know. Yeah, I can barely hear you. I can barely hear the whole thing. So it just could be my system. My system could just be really slow. Well, you're cracking up when you're talking now. The The video seems to be going out fine. We'll see. You know, we'll see. It, it, it's a progress. Okay. It's a spiritual journey. It's a test. It's a test. <laughs> or just teacher, professor or teacher at Utah State. I'm a teacher. Teacher. I, I have a charter school here in Nampa, Idaho. Well, that's still impressive. I'm pretty impressed. So, and I'm not easily impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are you going to tell us about tonight? Because there's so much crap going on in the world. Tell us something good. <laughs> something good. Uh, buckle up. Oh, crap. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, okay, that's not a good sign. That would be like on an airplane in space. It's okay, buckle up. Buckle <laughs> I just up. did the same thing. On the <laughs> this goes back to basic astrology. You, 
and you take a look at what's going on and you prepare yourself the best you can to deal with it uh, in the most appropriate way that you can so you don't get caught off guard. And what we have, you know, we talked about it last time, we have Mars, the warrior planet, the planet of all this energy, aggression. It's the life force energy of our blood. It's the color red. Uh, it's why we turn red in the face. Ace, why we get red with anger. Uh, we have road rage. I just want to tell you guys that some of the dragging with him and the, and the disconnect with his voice in the picture, that happened when we were actually recording. It's not happening in real time now. It happened during the recording. And it always happens with his, his internet, always. I don't know what the deal is. So we always have a little drag going on. But we also have passion, uh, uh, we, uh, love. and Wait, what, Liam? Uh, Kim on Facebook says, can you uh, make the video closer? I guess, can you make it bigger? Hang on. That's as good as it's going to get. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kim. These sort of things that mix in as well. So we have all this energy, this life force energy, and it's in the sign that it's that it actually rules. It's most comfortable there. So we have this huge amount of energy in in our world. And if we don't direct it appropriately, it's going to be very, very disruptive because it's like an explosion would be the greatest metaphor for it. And unfortunately, you know, that was just the beginning of the month. It was August 4th there in uh uh, Brut, uh, uh, Lebanon, we had that huge explosion. That is typical. That is the typical symbology of a Mars and Aries type situation. But you said that we need to direct this as individuals. How do we do that? I mean, we're dealing well, with planet energy. Yeah. What's happening right now that Mars is still going direct, but here very, very shortly, it's going to go retrograde, which is going to cause a, cause a major issue with it. It goes retrograde the 9th, which is the Wednesday of September. Okay. So how we can direct it, Deborah, to your point is you need to be sure that you have focused what you're doing. You have a plan of action. You know what you're trying to accomplish. If you don't have that and you're just kind of floating through and just let every day go by, you're... you're putting yourself at risk of getting hit by something like that, that's going to knock you off kilter. Mm. So goals, strategies, backup plans, break things down into small chunks so that you know you're hitting your mark. Is that what I'm hearing? That's going to help you out the most. It really is, especially as we, we move into Virgo and Mercury is going to go into Virgo as well as the sun. And that is that is the planet and the sign of making lists, of being directed with your energies, of focusing on what's going on and being aware of your health, your intellectual health and your nervous, uh, nervous system in general. Ah, yeah. So with this going on, people, you really have to be careful that, uh, that people are aware that there's gonna create this even a greater amount of potential stress on people and they need to you know do something with that otherwise it will clog up it'll block the channels and basically you create your your create situations where you tend to run into things or hurt yourself or create disasters around you of all sorts emotional and or physical so is it indicative of anything that you said that september 9th is a, a date that we're focused on that is that exactly. is the actual day it goes retrograde. So that's like a the starting point, and it's going to stay that way until November 13th. After the election. After the election. So we have a very strange, strange scenario that's building up for this whole election. We're going to have a Mercury that's retrograde during that election, and we're going to have a Mars retrograde, which means it's just going to be kind of flipped back and forth in terms of uh, what people see as being important and what people want to accomplish. Let me make a plug. The next episode of Spiral Topaz on the Make It So radio network is going to be... Uh, September 
17th. And that show is all, all about the election. Oh, good, 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 good. All about the election. I'm going to go over uh, the main charts and uh, we'll talk about where the energy is and how it's flowing and what I see based on that. So how do we, wow. uh, every, oh, look at your kitty. So we're all healers in some modality on this show. What can we do with this energy to help bring the fear factor down? Because I am seeing, I'm, it was, for a while it was all anger, anger, anger. Now I'm seeing unadulterated fear, fear, fear. And it's growing. What can we do uh, as a group, as individuals, to help with this? Since we have all this Mars energy going on, right? I would tell people to realize, you know, this is this does exist. It's not not all you. Ah, a lot of people don't realize that they're they think that they're the only one that's going through this. Everybody's going through this, and they need to realize they need to give themselves a way to channel that out to release it, either um, by meditation, chanting singing a song, uh, going outside, playing in the soil, doing something, uh, drumming, whatever, prayer, whatever it takes, but you need to release that, that build up energy, that stress inside everybody's head so they don't get so wound up that they tend to lash out in anger at situations around them. So I wanted to stop this just for a second because I, I really want to hammer this home. He says it's not just us individuals. We're all in this together. We're all going through this in some form or fashion. You know, and even if you're finding that you're in a, a great place in the environment for us, like, like us introverts, it's still wearing on our nerves because we're not able to conduct business as usual. So, you know, it's like the, the old cliche, misery loves company. Take pleasure and comfort in knowing you're not doing this by yourself. And maybe that will help you be able to deal with other people when you see them freaking out. Well, I love how Isaac always gives solutions too. Like he's telling you to chant, drum, meditate, you know, get it out, release it. Just don't hold it in. I like to howl naked yeah. in the backyard. That helps me a lot. <laughs> yeah, being, being grounded, yes. putting your feet on the grounded. Yeah. in the soil or on the grass and really absorbing energy and let that stress go back into the earth for recycling. Absolutely. All right, let's get back to it. So physical activity is really good to release that energy. Very, yes. very good. Very, very good. That is a natural release for that Mars type energy is to do something physical. So even if you take a walk, even if it's a short walk, that's going to help. So is the retrograde going to increase that anger or decrease good good question that wow. retrograde any retrograde makes you go back over what you've done before so it's going to make you review everything that you've basically done since you know roughly march and such huh. and it's going to to me i think it's going to increase the stress because mm -hmm. people are going to start second guessing everything <laughs> oh of course did i make the right decision mm -hmm. Am I yep. on the right pathway? Did right. I, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I respond appropriately? Did I, you know, interpret this situation correctly? And I think there's going to be a lot of that. And that's, you know, I think, you know, we'll talk about, uh, you know, in general for the election. That's that's going to be a big, big part of that. Is this, you know, what did you, what did people do, and why did they do it, and why didn't they do something else? <clears throat> right. Ooh. What I find surprising, Isaac, you know, because I, I do a lot of social media so I can do this show and promote it and promote our guests, is I, I, I see people that are so confident that their opinion is right, mm -hmm. but their their opinions are so pinpointed tunnel vision that they don't look at the big picture. Well, what is that all about? And what can we do? Can we get a, a planet alignment to fix that? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, where did you get Can we pull that tooth out and make that go away? It's working my last nerve. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're what you're talking about, and it always amazes me as well. But right now, what's going on in there? We had those big planets all in Capricorn, and it reinforces people's feeling that they they have it under control when they don't totally don't. <laughs> well, would you tell them that? Just look into the camera and say, 
people, you don't have it under control. Just tell them that. I want them to hear it. <laughs> I would say to people, if you think you you have it totally understood and under control, I would I would revisit that and really <laughs> have a broader frame of mind looking at everything that's going on. Because if you're really narrowed and and channeled and blinders on, you are going to miss out as to what is actually happening around you. This man should run for office. He is one of the most diplomatic people I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, I really do think he could make people. He's, well, he's a teacher. And when you're a teacher, that's what, you know, you have to be diplomatic. You want to to get as much info to as many kids will pay attention to you. Oh, see, I teach adults and I'm not diplomatic. So, you know, I admire that. That's great. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Kim says, Kim says that she totally agrees. Don't buy into the larger consciousness of fear. Okay. Now, who is Kim? Yes. Kim St. Andrew. Oh, hi, Kim. I know Kim. All right. I just said, I know several, so I want to make sure which one. All right. Back. <laughs> And if they have any doubts, call me and I'll help them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe okay. we, I would rethink no. that. I think that's what was said. What I would could rethink it that. What could it I would occur? think, what could I would think rethink that. <laughs> that. <laughs> I told you we were wild. Well, that, that does make sense, though, if there, are, there have been a, several moments where I've done something and then once I've stepped back and then I take a look at it again, I, I see so many different options that I missed because I was so just, it was just that tunnel vision, which yes, it served its purpose, but it didn't have to be so stressful. That's what could have been handled totally different. Great the biggest point. second guessing issue that I think everyone is dealing with is how far can they push the, the, the socializing? You know, the, okay, everybody's finally getting on board that they're going to have to wear a mask. But can they go out? Can they go out to eat? How many people can be in the restaurant if they go out to eat? The movie theaters are opening up in two days. Can we go to the movies? Is it okay to go get a pedicure? Can we go get a massage? You know, can I go out and see my grandkids even though they're going to school? And no one knows where those lines are and what's safe. And I would say, based on astrologically, I would be on the side of caution, caution, caution. It is, it is a, it's a dangerous environment astrologically out there with Mars, Mars like that, and the nature of COVID itself, that that Scorpio thing. And I, you know, I took a look at it again, you know, the last couple of days again as as it's progressing, and it's still in a state where it's. It's affecting society, and it has all its energy there, and it's it's not something to trifle with at all. It, we still got, you know, and I I said this at the very beginning. It's we have a fall to go through right. before things get better, and it's still looking that way. And believe me, I want I want it to go away. Believe me, I don't want to say this, but uh, that's well. Let me ask you something, Isaac. You being a teacher. When I found out you were having to go back to school, it frightened me. I mean, it, it literally scared me. And I was telling my group, I am really concerned. I'm not going to throw it, I'm not going to throw that energy your way. But I was concerned because it was just like, okay, now it's in my face. Now I'm now I know someone who is literally having to be put personal. into this position. It's, it's personal. personal now. And um I, I was saying, what can we do? How do you, how can we make this better? What can, you know, and I think you hit the nail on the head. We just have to be prudent about the safety issues, the factors and do what it is that we can to keep ourselves as safe as possible. Just don't do something that's really, you know, crazy. Yeah. Large crowds is in, in a nutshell, large crowds is what you definitely have to avoid. Right. Don't do that anyway. I don't like large clouds. Yeah. <laughs> and like my state right now and my school, they decided they backed off and we have this next week. It's going to we're going to go two weeks online and then they're going to revisit it. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, OK, good. Yeah. Excellent. So you did a good Excellent. job. Excellent. <laughs> so, yes, it worked. It worked. Oh, my gosh. 
Have you seen that? Really made me mad. It It did. It really made me mad. I thought, nope, I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with that at all. (laughs) All right, Annie Oakley, put your gun up. (laughs) Okay, well, I'll shut up now. I got you two weeks. Okay, oh my God. Just shut up, girl. Just shut shut up. I I have a good feeling. Well, I have a feeling that it's going to be extended. So I think so too. Good. Have you seen this? For me, that's actually the best way. And you know, we're uh, we're working all sorts of programs and and, uh, approaches and teaching online that are going to be even bigger and better than they were in the emergency situation we found us found ourselves in the spring. So, I think two points were being made here that I I think we should try to bring up. One, I do believe that Elizabeth helped manifest a positive energy to make some changes. I think we all have the ability to manifest environments for ourselves and our friends with our thoughts. And the other thing is, is that even though we're in a situation here where things are just not working out the way we wanted to, and we can improve. A year ago, I never would have thought we would do something like this. And I don't know about you guys, but I think it's going kind of smooth today. So, you know, it's all about taking that those lemons and dumping enough sugar on there that you can drink that stuff. So, <laughs> uh, awesome. We'll do the best we can. That's what we'll do. Well, I was telling right. the, that is exciting. Before you came on, that when I'm bored, that's when I get really creative. So this is a good time for people to be creative about this stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and figure it out. But my question for you is: Have you seen any pattern similar to this in our history? Is there like a, a historical event that we can relate this to? This goes way in the past, and it's you, it's associated with major social upheaval. Go, go figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I keep on talking about this whole thing with Capricorn. Capricorn is the way we view the world in terms of its government and administration of government. And with Pluto there just sitting there so slow, and then we got Jupiter and Saturn, it's forcing us to reconsider what is a country's role in, in governing its people. And what's happening, people that are feeling frustrated in terms of what they they need to express themselves are going to rebel. It's going to happen. Belarus right now is in the midst of a revolution. Absolutely. We've just been through this whole summer of uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. You're going to see this again and again everywhere. Uh, we have it in you know, China and uh, Taiwan, that whole situation going on. This is, and you know, people say, well, we always have revolutions. Well, yeah, we do. But now this is really, really being focused. And it's, it's just bubbling. It's like this cauldron of uh, change that's taking place. And I don't see it as being anarchy, even though at some points it kind of touches that. It feels uh, like it sometimes. Yeah. Uh, change is always messy. And sometimes yes. it has to go always. through that to get to a better better state. So you you're know, saying this about the eggs and the omelet and all that kind of thing. But uh, when people start viewing things differently, it goes through that that gyration of friction and agitation before we get to the other side and actually reap some of the good sides of it. But I'm starting to see sparkles of the good side coming. So, you know, I'm always the optimist in terms of everything. And I always see, you know, what what is coming that we can work forward. And I see that happening. So I don't... Uh, I don't hide under a rock, but, uh, you know, I try to take care of it as well. So what do you think about the stuff that's going on in uh, Washington State, at, in Portland and Seattle? Where do you see that, that what direction that's going in? There's there's a real mess there in a couple different ways. But uh, with the energies that are around and around that area, they're going to have to do some major, major cleanup of what people are after and what is going on and, and make a clear de- delineation of what, who's who and what's, what, is, uh, what are they trying to do and how people are trying to control it. <laughs> well, um, no, I'm not going to say that. Never mind. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I have no well, view, but that's that's not the astrological view. That's just my view. But uh, no, I, I agree. It's with gonna you. Have, there's going to be difficulties for a period of time before that's cleaned up. But in that case, I fear you know I fear that they let too much build too quickly and didn't take care of the people, the, the city like they should have, and they created right. a way that they're going to have to write out. Well, the positive is, is that we're starting to hear, though, in other cities, we're not going to be another Portland. We're not going to be another Washington state. So we now have the example of what if you go this way and you follow the, the, the lead of the general public with this voice, this is what's going to happen. And we can't afford that na nationally. So. I think that's a positive. I mean, that, that's I'm, a positive, even though you have to go through that horrible situation that still exists out there. Uh, yeah. At least people can reference it. That's a very good point. And they, and they understand how it can go to the, you know, the bad side, the dark side real fast. Right. Right. Well, you know, there's a there's a, a Facebook page that I get from the uh, Plano Police Department. And it talks about this is what's happening or this is what's going on and those kinds of things. And it wasn't too shortly afterwards, after there was the, the major uh, damage that had been done to, you know, these, these people that were just like standing there in, in situations. They came out with a, with a bulletin that said, we are not going to do that. This is not, that is not the direction we intend to go. We intend to protect our, our individuals, but you know, we are going to just be, we were going to work with you as much as we possibly can. We will get everything staged if you need it. And it was more of, it, it, it reminded me more of the peace officers, not the police officers. Right. It was more, what can we do to knock this out in the bud? Let's not have that situation and have a better control over it. And the people that responded online were really quite taken back it was like wow thanks for just listening to what we had to say and it's just like i just need someone to hear me or at least you know kind of give me the idea that you're paying attention and i think that's what a lot of these people really needed was someone who said yeah we're, we hear you we listen we're yeah. we're not going to react that way so that's one of those if it's an issue and a problem and then in trying to deal with it you know yeah yeah well, what we need is a really strong voice or voices that talk about what, like Isaac's talking about, putting the positive out there, not a spin. I'm not talking about spin doctors. I'm talking about right. the because like I was watching one of the police cases. I'm not going to reference the names. And one of the officers was asked, is this a hold or is this a technique that you learned in police academy? And he said, no. So the point there is, and that needs to really be hammered home, is that when we have these issues with the police, it is not necessarily that they are acting on policy, education, or training. This is a personal decision that they have made using their personal filters and it was a bad decision it's not a police decision and i think that bad we're going to start seeing more and more of that and seeing the positive there's no need to defund the police if you can re-educate the police and make sure we have better quality employees because police are employees mm -hmm. you know fire them <laughs> they don't do their job fire them you know, and we need to make them accountable within themselves. We've always had a police brotherhood to protect themselves. But now the way they protect themselves is to make sure the other police officers are doing their job properly, not right. covering up their mistakes. So now you want to get into something interesting. Uh, the word martial, like martial law, that yeah. comes from Mars itself. Oh, policing is a Mars activity. Oh, my gosh. The law no of the side. That's where the rules are made. And the idea is that, you know, the police are enforcing the laws. But we have this situation now with these planets, all this strength in Capricorn and then Mars there. So they're, they're both uh, feeding on each other and uh, creating some issues in terms of, you know, how those laws are being enforced. And... Is their energy, the Mars energy, being uh, appropriately applied? That's what right. I mean. Appropriately. That's the that's the word. Appropriately. That's the word right there. Appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it just because you can doesn't mean you do. You know. Yeah. 
or should. Yeah. But it's, it's always been an issue with any sort of police force of something like that is those individuals taking too much of their own uh, personal edge bias, whatever you have, and using that in a in a position of power to their end, not the good. Well, the, you know, and we've had this over and over in this country with vigilante uh, enforcements and private police, you know, before, you know, Pinkertons, you know, people think of them as a private detective agency, which they were, but they were also a uh, pseudo law enforcement in the West because there was no law enforcement in the West until, you know, the city's got to be big enough to have a sheriff and things of that. So, you know, we've, we've really kind of gone full circle several times with laws, how they get enforced, and who's in charge, who manages mm -hmm. the power, where does the buck stop? Right. And that's going to that's gonna continue. That's going to be uh, the whole issue of how we deal with laws and enforcing those. That's going to always continue for, for a long period of time. That doesn't go away. Mars eventually will move out of Aries and get into Taurus and things will calm down, which will, you know, be into next year and such. But for right now, you know, this is a wave of this intensity that hopefully that we can uh, focus to the good. Mars is action. Not all action is bad. Action is good. Action gets you from this place to some place to ride that and work with that. And that's what you can also tell clients as well. What do you need to change? What would be the best thing you could do to make a difference for yourself or your family or your group, your, your tribe going forward? And put that energy and that, that stress and tension into something that you can make something good out of it. So where's the virus fitting in with all of this, Isaac? Do you see anything in alignment with, with the physical part of the virus in the spread? And Say the first part of that question again, please. Do you, do you see anything when you're reading their charts on how where the physical part of the virus fits into the charts? Or is it just a tool? Virus? The COVID thing is this, you know, this typical... Uh, hidden Scorpio type focus of uh, transformation. And since it's Scorpio, it's transformative and that transformation is usually really, really severe. It's major. And in a lot of cultures, the greatest form of transformation you can go through is death itself. Mm -hmm. That's what goes to the death card, Elizabeth, right? Right. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you have this type of virus and it actually is such that it can actually kill people. So it actually goes down to the symbolic representation on earth. It, it will kill you. It is, I mentioned before, viruses have always been around. They always will be around. They were, for most, uh, in most cases, we can take care of them or we don't, you know, die from them. We've been around them for thousands and thousands of years, but this is unique. It's something different and we're going to have to ride through it. And it's part of this whole transformation of earth itself and of people. Uh, is it, is it good? Is it bad? It's mostly is. Well, let's take it to we see <laughs> But let's take it to a philosophical right. range, okay? So we have the physicality of the actual deaths with the deaths that we're seeing from the people. But we also know that a lot of people have long range problems even when they recover. But what could this virus actually be bringing a death to in our society, do you think? With, because we have the Mars, the passion, the change. I do listen to you, see, I do listen. And so we have the Scorpio with the change. What is the virus bringing a change to us about, do you think? A good it's good to make us look at uh, human interaction differently. I think is we're really going to get down to that. And we're going to go through this, you know, for a period of time of judging other people and their safety and their safety uh, relation to ourselves. Basically, are they going to be harmful to us or helpful to us? 
I don't really like that, but I think we've seen this in the past before, and we're going to get you have to go through some of that judgment and uh, deciding if it's really going to be are are is that group of people going to be okay? You know what's interesting about that is that the two extremes of that does it build our empathy or does it build our paranoia? You know, that's really intriguing to me. It's gonna it's gonna do both. Yeah. Absolutely, but yeah. in a but in a pinch, you're gonna you're gonna take you're gonna be fearful. Okay. Push, push oh yeah. Uh, oh that's, yeah. That's the human reaction. That's how we've stayed alive so for so long. Yeah, I see that a lot in my personal family, especially with the older people, because the, they don't want to die from a virus. They know they're getting older. They know death is coming, but this is not the way they want it to be. And you know and they're also because they're older they're not used to admitting their fears which makes it worse mentally and yes. it's real hard to get them to talk right. about it, you know right that is do a difficult see, situation do you see a vaccine in early 2021 everything i've looked at so far says that first part of 2021 looks good there there's also something there is this one ray of hope that I'm interested in that's going to take place around the middle. It's the 12th of September. Jupiter goes direct in, Cap in Capricorn. It has been going retrograde. There might be some positive news in terms of changing the government or things that are going on there that would be uh, welcome. It'd be advantageous for everybody. So September I'm looking for 12 that. is the date. Is that the date you said? 12th oh. of September? Yeah. And that's after the election, so you're thinking... No, that's before the election, sweetie. September. It is? September, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, September. September. Yeah. I was thinking November 12th. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. But, uh, you know, that's the ray of hope. But otherwise, you know, this, this Scorpio-natured COVID... And it's got Mercury in Scorpio. It's got Mars in this Libra. You know, it's it's really, really focused on dealing with one's fears and such. And you, you mentioned elderly people. You know, my parents are, are extremely concerned about it all, mm -hmm. like everybody else's. It's very right. dangerous feeling to, uh, to be existing in. But... Uh, it really, uh, like uh, Elizabeth, you were saying, it brings it to their face, and it, you can't hardly turn away from it because it's it's all around, and you have to deal with. It. Yeah, it's yeah. everywhere. And I, I did notice one thing though. If I don't, if I watch if from Jan, from, well, let's say from March, every time I watch something or this is another symptom, I felt like I had it. So I've had COVID <laughs> off and on for what five or six months. Every time I watch that, I've got that. I know I do. I feel it. I can feel it. It's me. I know it is. And then once I just get away from it and I don't pay attention to it and I just, you know, do my tasks and do what I need to do, then I'm okay. So I know there is this element of how much information are we getting that is just aiming at that fear factor and then how much of it is just trying to say this is how you can actually be protected. And that really that really aggravates me because I know a lot of elderly people, that's how they're getting their info is through watching the media and, and getting it that way and it just magnifies their fear factor. And my dad watches Fox News all day long. Oh, my. Well, so, I mean, there's, but I'm laughing. I was, the reason I was laughing at you is that I was convinced that I had it in February. The more I thought about it, I'm, oh, I know I had it in February. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I for a week. So I went and gave blood last week because they test you for the antibodies <laughs> for free. And I, <laughs> I wanted to find out. So I didn't have it. I didn't have any antibodies. My blood is great. My cholesterol's way down. I'm so healthy. It's, it's, it stinks. And so I have decided that I must be immune to it because, you know, mother was in the hospital two weeks ago and I'm in the hospital for four days with her. And, you know, half the hospital is dedicated to the virus people. She didn't get it. I didn't get it. So we got great immune systems. And I'm just going to go with that thought. <laughs> yeah, stick with that. That's awesome. That is Absolutely. Awesome. I had a I had a situation where I was talking to someone in the medical profession about uh, an appointment, 
And they said, Miss, you know, Miss Harden, we're going to have to ask you all these questions. And I'm going, that's fine. You know, ask away. Well, have you had any aches and pains? And have you had shortness of breath? And have you had this? And have you, you know, blah, blah, blah. So by the time that we got to the end, I said, well, you know, honey, I'm 66. I've had all that within a very short span of time, but I, I haven't, I haven't been out of the country. I, I don't believe I've been exposed to other people like, you know, from, from that point of view. And I'm, you know, I kind of just run a low grade temperature just in general. I mean, that's just, that's been my nature. You're a hot but mom. it was like, yeah, you, well, yeah, 90, what, 99? Oh, my goodness, we're so hot. But you're a lukewarm mama. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, I, uh, that, could, that, could, that could be it. But yeah, I mean, everything they asked, it was like, yeah, I've had that. Well, yeah, but yeah, I've had that every day. <laughs> Something, you know. <laughs> I haven't had that pain recently, but yeah, my arms hurt or something, you know, it just makes, then you don't know. You just don't, is it real or not for yourself, that is. Yeah. Well, something that's been talked about here recently is this whole idea of uh, doom scrolling. Basically, it's people that are looking up things on the internet all the time and they're always looking at this, these articles and they can just keep on coming and it puts them in a state of basically despair stress uh my daughter does that and that's a very real thing that is that saturn energy in capricorn basically coming down on your head and saying you know there's no end to it and it's all darkness and uh you know uh, we're all going to, you know, perish in the end and all that kind of stuff. So that, that's a very real thing that we need to be aware of for our clients, that they don't get caught into that whirlpool of uh, uh, despair is what it amounts to. Yeah, my daughter calls me crying about once a week. She's worried that I'm not going to make it to heaven and she will. And the, the world's coming to an end. And, <laughs> you know, my daughter is very emotional, very empathetic and very extreme. Okay. <laughs> And I told her, I said, it's all in God's hands, honey. Just do what you're supposed to do. Follow the rules and it'll be fine. <laughs> you know? yeah, well, that's, you know, and I think, you know, a good mental state of mind makes a world of difference in everything you do. Right. Right, including dealing with this world and viruses and everything else that's going around. You know, to me, you know, that's that's a blessing if you can you know approach it that you you're going to be okay and you're doing everything you can and uh, being aware of what's going on around you. Well, I think my personal problem yeah. is more of outliving my welcome and being here too long. <laughs> <laughs> we should not do late shows. I am just giving. I don't know. Uh, okay. I'm agreeing with that. I'll say now. <laughs> It's way past your bedtime. That's my bed. I can tell. <laughs> no idea you guys would be this uh, energetic this uh, this late, but this is a... Well, neither did we. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, my God. We're so awake. <laughs> First of all, I had coffee. I had coffee before I came on. Number two, I'm a night. Number three. I'm still drinking. What are you about reading? Deborah? Give yourself a voice and be yourself. And boy, I have just run with that. Just I, oh Lord, has she ever? <laughs> I, I have to tell the audience we had a group reading earlier this season <laughs> from Isaac about the show. <laughs> and he told us all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was a very long reading. It was very thorough. But the only oh. thing I remember was, Deborah, find your voice and be yourself. <laughs> and that's all I've taken from the reading. <laughs> and Elizabeth, I'm sorry. but <laughs> It's your fault. <laughs> Well, it, 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 it did make a difference. I have to I mean, speak it, it, what I see, though, you know. Yeah, it, it was truthful. It was. And I, that's you're doing a wonderful job at your instructions. You're a great teacher. Thank you. <laughs> yes. You, you well, evidently, you needed to hear that. But uh, yeah, so. I've never, seriously, no, I think so. 
No, really, look, really, all kidding aside, I, I've always spoken my mind. I've always been a vocal person, very, you know, direct in what I say. But I have never had anyone said, Deborah, get up and speak your truth. It's always, Deborah, shut up. Deborah, sit down. <laughs> Deborah, be quiet. Oh, my life. That's the first time in my entire life someone said, get up and speak and be yourself. And I mean, it was liberating. It really was. You've turned it goes right into that freedom. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I was a gorilla that got out of the cage. Ooh, 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 give me the bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing, my bra's going. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Isaac, what can we? What can? What can we wrap yeah. up with? Is there a? Is there something oh, that we can do? Um, <laughs> so we all things that we can do. Into September. Okay. okay, a couple of things that we can do. If you're dealing with a lot of Mars oh. energy, and you're feeling a lot of stress, you need to be around water. Uh, Good. Or things that are really, really green. So, uh, green. green. Money's okay. green. Money's green. Being <laughs> Money. outside, uh, plants, things like that are going to soothe your body and your mind. Green and water. Okay. Yeah. Those are going to be the best things. If you start feeling all that anxiety, you know, is, is definitely get out there and, uh, you know, look at look at the trees, walk, take a walk, go to the lake, a river, uh, be just be around that. And that's that is just going to lower your stress level significantly. Does bathtub water count? Yes, it does. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Now there's a well, yeah. There's, I yeah. mean, yeah. Now here's a trick you can do: you can put your gemstones in your bath with you. Okay. Yeah. And if you have, if I'm feeling really, really stressed, I always big bathtub full of hot water, and I put in some agate. Oh. Or petrified agate. wood, and that slows everything down and centers you. Agate or petrified wood? Is that what I forgot about? Petrified, petrified wood. wood. Yes, look, petrified look, wood. And look what I just and bought, Isaac. It's amazing. I just nice. bought it. Isn't that nice? And it, it makes a world of difference. It just basically centers you and makes you feel uh, more attached to the earth instead of being so flighty and, and uh, this, uh, this mercury darting of energy. Mental energy, it just slows it all down and kind of centers you. Yeah, I like that list idea. I mean, we're um, I'm teaching the uh, artist way class, and one of the things I've decided to do, and that's exactly what I've been doing, is I've started to make a list of my tasks on what I need to do, but not for the class, but you know, for myself. And I got almost all of these accomplished today because I just took them one at a time, this task, this task, this task. And I feel so much better this afternoon or this evening because I got so much done. And I like those little, you know, just this little bit, this little bit, this little bit. That really has made a difference. So I, I really like that idea. Elizabeth, look to your right. Look to your right. Look to your right. There's your list. It's up there all the time. <laughs> Your Pentagon. That's just the radio. No, no. This is radio. This is the radio shows. This is radio shows. And actually, this is radio. These are clients. No, this is radio clients. This is doctor. We tease her that she has a fuller calendar than the Pentagon does. <laughs> well, she says it's the Pentagon calendar, but it's not. I mean, you know, I want to. I want to try to have some semblance of. Yes, it is. Organized crime here so I can see what's going on. But, you know, with I don't put sun, stuff up here like I've got to get this or this. Yeah. 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 Now with that sun and that mercury going into Virgo, this is the time to clean out your closet, to make lists, to make a plan of action for the spring and next summer. This is the time period. That's why we we typically go back to school in this type of time period is because of that mercury energy it's this intellect and, and gaining new knowledge that you can work with going That's forward right. but use it to yeah, your advantage says, right. that was a great you know, tip ease up straighten your uh, she's all know. about the list right now who said what 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 kim was mentioning that um that was a great tip that isaac was talking about and she's all about the list right now 
Yeah, that's good. It gives you something to focus on so that it makes it more real. Absolutely. Your uh, your closet, your mind, your office, whatever it needs to. My closet is color coordinated by season. Oh gosh, I know so feng shui is ridiculous, but I will tell you this: what I'm struggling with, and I hear this from other people. My life has changed so much career-wise, I don't know what to do next because everything the way I've known it for 32 years has changed. My clientele has changed, the business model has changed, and I don't even know if I even want to do this anymore, you know, because you know, I have three different companies. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care anymore. And so what do you have to say for people like us that are kind of in limbo with our passion? This is the time. That's part of that energy of going through that transformation. You're going to have to decide what... What means something to you? The show. I, would I, take love, you. I love this show. What what it really down in your heart, in your, you know, in your gut, in your deep emotions, you know, what is going to make you happy and mean something to you? And that's where I would look. I'm a 62-year-old Kardashian. I want this show. <laughs> And I can twerk. You got this show. It's just, just you know. I, I think you have it. I think I think you do. Yeah. <laughs> so I do. I, I love talking to people like you. I love putting these ideas together. I like sharing these concepts. I hope that people are being made to think or to at least analyze something. And I, I, this allows me to reach more people and allows you and Elizabeth and Luann to reach more people than we could probably do, you know, in a month or a year or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And I just would like to perpetuate this. Sure. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's what you need to roll with. You need to roll with, you know, what really grabs you inside and says, you know, this is means something to you. This means something to me. I've done a lot of things well, but this is one of the first things that's truly felt like me. Like me. It is your platform. This does work well for you. It really does. I mean, you are in your element. Yeah. And that's what everybody's looking for. And if they don't have it, this time period kind of throws them every which way to try to rebalance the deck and push them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. that pushing can be kind of brutal, though. Yes, it, brutal. it can be brutal. Yeah. brutal. If you're not on the right path, man. It's it comes around and it just it's brutal. Of... It really is. I mean, it is. Oh my god. Well, I could talk to you forever, and uh, I actually let you talk, which is amazing. So. <laughs> So I, I'm glad that you've, you're, you've found a way to stay with us. I would hate to lose you as a, as a guest because you make me think. I like people that make me think, that make me analyze myself and assess myself. And, you know, every time you come on, you always give me a little tidbit. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to go look at that. And I always wind up on Amazon pulling books and buying books and reading because it triggered something that went here and then went there. I'm like a ping pong ball, you know. Beautiful. So, well, but isn't that the purpose, though, Isaac, is to get people to think, mm -hmm. to look up information, to make a decision from information purposes, not just hearsay. Right. And, uh, you know, this is a great avenue. Girl, and, shut up. You know, Elizabeth has uh, allowed me, I'm going to have a new radio show. It's going to be every second Thursday. It's going to be Tarot Theater. I'll be talking about tarot cards and how... Tarot can be a transformative process for you as an individual and groups. That makes sense. I mean, things are just. Oh, it's going to be great. Things are tools. It's going to be great. And, and tools work if 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 you're comfortable with them and you know how to use them. If you you know if you don't know how to, how to use a shovel, you're not going to get that hole dug. You know. That's um, right. Well, he definitely knows his tarot. That is no joke. All right, so Isaac, no tell question me, on that. Hold of you, how to email you, find your website, sign up for anything that you've got going on. Yeah, uh, you can contact me at Isaac I S S A C at spiraltopaz dot com, and uh, you can email me there. I also have that website. Uh, I have astrological readings, tarot readings, 
uh, rune stones, other things, and we're in the midst of revamping the website. Hopefully, we'll have a re grand opening of my website in September. And Tarot awesome. Theater is coming. And don't forget, September 17th, that program is all about the election. So you don't want to miss that. That'll be an interesting one. Those are always great to do. So Elizabeth's going to promote them on our page stuff to let people know about it ahead of time. So we'll get that out there for yeah. you. Yeah, if you'll send me just a little blurb of what what it is that you're going to do, and I'll take that and I'll I'll go ahead and start working that up, and we'll go ahead and start putting it out there on the spiritual neighborhood. We'll put it on the other pages, and we'll put it on uh, make it make it so we'll put it on there as well because that's another format. Yeah, Mars is burning up. I'm hot. <laughs> a lot of energy going on. Lots so, of energy. Yeah. All right. up. Well, thank you for coming tonight, and we will see you next month. And okay. what happens, see let's you know. soon. Good right. to see you. Uh, all right, let's see if I can do this well. We're going to turn this off, and we're going to make this big. Ta da! Oh my God, I'm ready for a job on NBC. <laughs> so, what did y'all think of that? That's pretty. Well, yes. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? Stop sharing. There. Now. Now we're really good. Oh, much better. Yeah. Much better. Oh my God. I don't know where to I Now I know where to look. I thought that went fairly smooth for our first time, don't you? Yeah. I oh did. my God. That, that went well. awesome. Excellent job. Bravo. Thank Seriously. You. Thank you. Thank you. But very well done. Is he not Extremely an incredible person? Well done. Is he not incredible though? I mean, I really he could is. talk to him for days. And the here's here's where I come at this. I am a skeptic about a lot of things. We all know that. And I don't know a lot about astrology. We all know that. I don't pretend. But no matter what he says, this chart says with this moon, with this retrograde, he always is able to tie it into practical information, practical knowledge with practical advice that you can't argue with regardless of where he got the information from. So that that's what I love. When you also understand what he's saying. Because I, I, I'm like you. I don't know a whole lot about astro uh, astrology. And so I get confused and I just don't want anything to do with it. When I listen to Isaac, I understand. Because, because he understands so much. Because he, he understands yeah. it. Yes, absolutely, Luann. Well, and, and he and understands that information it. is not worth anything if you can't apply it to daily living. You know, that's the thing that frustrates me about uh, people that are hugely intellectuals, that they can regurgitate things. But if you can't take that information and apply it to how to improve the quality of your life. Who cares? What's the point? You know? Well, seriously, that's true. So I just I just find him totally <laughs> fascinating. I find our new format fascinating. I have a lot of ideas of how we can utilize this to improve what we do and for other shows. And listen, I just cannot encourage people enough. If you have some information that you want to share or services, let us help you with that. We now have more options on how to do it and when to do it. So contact us, spiritualneighborhood at gmail.com. And we will make that happen if we can. So mention the new thing that Annette Bingham is going to be doing that she threw out there yesterday. What's that about? Did y'all watch that? It is incredible. Annette Bingham is an incredible artist, and I'm very happy that she's my friend. And she is doing COVID virus colors, or COVID colors is what it's called. And they're just short little art classes that she's putting on YouTube. It's on her channel, the Heart Journey Studio, but she's also letting us have them and putting them on our YouTube channel, the Spiritual Neighborhood Network, to make it available to more people. And it's just some things that you can do with watercolors and try that even someone like me who can't even hold a paintbrush can do. And it's really incredible. <laughs> and... Uh, there's a couple of other videos up that she has done on how to uh, heal the heart. And she and I were talking yesterday, and I think she's going to expand on that series as well. There's one up there about how to uh, uh, hey. re rewrite your own story. They're just little two-minute segments. And another one is about bullying, and they're just incredibly done. She's very talented. Um, I just wish the whole world could appreciate her the way I do and see her 
and her talents because they're just awesome. So uh, we're moving forward slowly but surely. And that was the other thing Isaac said. He goes, don't do too much too fast. So I've tried to pace all this and it's worked out that way naturally because I'm one who wants to get things done. Do list, you got to get the do list done. I can't rest till the to do, to do list is done. So I've had to slow down. That's all right. I'm tired. <laughs> the virus has made me tired. Elizabeth, I when, <clears throat> go ahead. when sorry, is go ahead. Isaac going to do the tarot? Uh, we're talking about him um, starting his show in September. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, we're looking at the second Thursday of the month. We need to finalize everything. The reason we're just kind of like tentatively going with this is because we're, we we want to make sure that his school situation gets settled. We don't want him to, um, you know, that's two shows that's very close together, and we want to make sure mm -hmm. he's got plenty of time. And the second the, Thursday. And the other one is the fourth Thursday or that's tonight. So that's the third Thursday. Tonight. Third. You can see Isaac tonight. And the the days that you can hear him. Yeah, you can hear him. Tonight. That you can hear him. Actually, his guest is going to be me. <laughs> I will be his guest for tonight, actually. Not that we're incestuous or anything. <laughs> not, not psychic questions. Don't be asking me no psychic questions. That's not what we're, we're just going to be talking about what it's like to be someone in my profession and be in the COVID um, lockdown. What is it like to still try and have a business and those kinds of things? Because it's, it's, it's a challenge. We all know that, Deborah, especially because you go out to all these places. So it, it's a challenge, but yeah. Yeah. Tonight, eight o'clock. So that's cool. I'll be tuning into that. Um, he did mention three dates in the, his charts that I thought were intriguing. I just want to mention them. September, September 9th. September the 12th. And September the 12th. And then something right after November 12th. But I didn't get the exact date. And uh, the 13th. Oh, uh, retrograde. Uh, Mars is going to go retrograde. <laughs> September 9th through November 13th. Yeah. So the Mercury goes into retrograde right in the Halloween period that's going to go right on into the election period. So Mercury will also be in uh, retrograde. So that is the communications, anything electronic, uh, all those things, which is another reason why a lot of people, whether they realize it or not, are really trying to ramp up the idea of do mail-in voting, get your, you know, get your mail-in vote in as much as you can, do things on a physical level more so than an electrical or electronic, those kinds of but things. But, you know, I, someone told me on Facebook today that we don't really have the option to do uh, mail-in voting in Texas in, any more so than we have in the past. You can do it if you're a shut-in, if you're over 65, and something else. But other than that, you just can't opt to do the mail-in ballot. And I thought that you could. So... That's something that I'm going to have to look into. Um, otherwise, well, I would. I, of course, I'm over 65, and I'm getting all kinds of stuff from mail-in. So, yeah. you know, we were exposed to the mail-in because my mom, she couldn't get out to vote. So we oh. always did the mail-in right, right. You know, for her. Right. So I just thought that had become an option for everybody in all states because of the virus. So I was sadly mistaken. Sadly, now, it could be changed before that happens. I mean, that could be in the works. That could be something that um, when he was talking about the change that's coming in pertaining to the government, that could also be for technically for the state as well. So that could be another change coming. But I have to say, um, just from my experience from last night, um, Carrie and I have been talking about this for the last couple of months, something major happening in September. We, we told that to the people that have called in. I mean, it's been going on every time we're on, on the phone. And last night when I was on the show with uh, Dr. Chuck, he said something that just just almost kind of blew me out of the water. We were getting ready to close. We were getting right down to the very end, and we were just signing off. And he said, oh, <clears throat> can I throw something out? And I said, sure. And he said, if for some reason something happens before our show, can we, can we do another show? 
And, you know, I'm getting a thousand different questions and, you know, and you're going, what is going on? What's happening? What are you picking up? Blah, blah, blah. So I think going back to what we were talking about in September, especially on the 12th, let's just be prepared for maybe us to be doing another show as well if something comes up. Well, all of it. I think that's a good idea. Um, I was participating in uh, my prophetic ministry last night and I was listening to the different things that were being said to different people. And even though specific dates were not mentioned, it was about things coming quickly, things happening very right. soon, that type of thing. And I, I do think September is going to be a key time for all of us, regardless. So um, I, I'm always open to doing emergency shows or, you know, spur of the moment shows because, hell, what are we going to do? I'm just, I'm just sitting there, you know, so... I, I, I spend all day long on Zoom playing with it, trying to figure out how to finesse it and things. So, yeah, just let me know. So that would be something just to keep in the back of your mind as, hey, you know, if there's something that's a major, major deal, we can always do something about it or, you know, just have all of us come on and just give our opinion as to what we're picking up. <clears throat> that can be done as well. I do have an idea for or how. Or the psychic. You know, it could be Ask the Psychic. I Absolutely. Mean, four of us here. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> and I have an idea for a Halloween. Her, uh, Luann's hat gave it to me. What if we all dress up for Halloween and do a show and, and Luann can wear her hat and she can get a cauldron or make an elderberry sauce? <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Well, that that should be a paying gig. I mean, seriously, <laughs> really come into the room. You got to pay to come into the room. I think so. Be I, I, I think mean, so. It can be done. I think so. And um, I've been. Uh, I have not come public with this new gift of mine, but I'm going to now. I guess I'm doing medical analysis and having some pretty good success with it so that's awesome and i'll just refer them over to Luann awesome. to get some elderberry shit so they can get well so. <laughs> did you discover that that gift before or after you had your session with Luann? i had been exposed to it before you have to you have to remember something about me i walk away from my gifts I, I've been exposed to my gifts on and off all my life, and, and I walk away from them because I don't like the responsibility. I really am a free spirit, and I've had so much responsibility in my life. I get resentful at times, and I just have reached a point in my life where I realize I cannot turn my back on it. So they've been coming back to me in layers as I get not comfortable, but where I feel like I'm integrated. That's really the word that comes from where I'm more integrated. Um, and what happened was, is I actually had a session with Dr. High two months ago and the integration went. Um, and then everything that I've been exposed to in the past has just come to fruition. And so now it's just time to start practicing them publicly. And awesome. I just, you know, I'm always reluctant to do that, but, um, oh, well. well, I think that, I think there's a lot of potential. I really think, I think we could do like a psychic night, literally, you know, especially for Halloween, a Halloween event. It can, we can do a day of the dead event. I mean, there's all kinds of different things, but it would be on a paying basis, obviously, because, you know, well, if we're going to do a Day of the Dead, we have to have a rule. If you're dead, you don't get to come because you don't have any real money. <laughs> no, 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 don't keep those people away. That's my income. I'm just making a joke. <laughs> She's joking. She's I'm joking. Dead. Don't yeah. listen to her. Yeah. What, were you, who were you telling to shut up while ago? Who were you telling to shut up while ago? Was that you? Me. Who were you talking to? She, she was telling herself. I said, because. girl, shut up. It just on and on and on. It's like, okay, you made your point. Just shut up. Oh, I thought you were adorable. Don't tell yourself to shut. Hey, you like my new hat? My mother-in-law gave this to me yesterday. And this is just a headband I put on there to make it glitter. <laughs> no way. It's a headband, and I just put it on there like that because it was falling off the desk, and I just threw it up there. And I'm like, well, that's cute. And I just left it up there. <laughs> well, I'll be. I'll be. That is cute. Add your own bling. That's genius. So since I got Carrie on the show here now twice, 
Carrie, when are you going to do your own show, honey? No pressure. Um, <laughs> um, pressure. <laughs> what, what kind of a show are you thinking, Miss Gabby? I think any show that you think would be fun, that you think that you would enjoy, that would make you laugh and smile and make you feel like you have done something wonderful. Whatever that looks like. It. You can strip. You can read cards. You can <laughs> 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 Yeah. Or you can read cards and strip. Oh, That's the so naked so stripper. Oh, I love oh it. God, I just heard what say. The naked truth. But, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. The naked truth. I love it. That's so, gonna be uh, you don't even have to be naked. Look, look, you just wear a, a peasant blouse and you pull it down like that. And oh, we'll, good Lord. And we'll just show you from the shoulders up and they'll think you're naked, but you won't be. Oh, my God. Now I can't get it back up. You gotta get the girls call in me place. Rose Lee, huh? <laughs> you know, my nickname is Rose. I don't know if you ever knew that, but my nickname is Thorn Rose. I did not know that. So we just really? call you Gypsy Thorn Rose, <clears throat> the naked Gypsy stripper. Thorn Rose. There you go. The naked truth with Gypsy Thorn Rose. I love it. Cart. <laughs> I think that's a whole new show right there. I think that's a whole new show. I really do. I love it. Oh my gosh. I got good shoulders. Did you? Oh, that's probably one of my best features. <laughs> oh, you do oh, make me laugh. Well, oh, you know what? You, you're telling yourself to shut up. I was telling myself, be still, because when I was talking about the gorilla that got out of the cage and I got those girls. Oh, my God, that was hysterical. I thought, my and God, it, I'm going to knock myself out. Get those girls going. They're not going to stop. That was funny. It <laughs> yeah. was. That, that was funny. Going. I'm like, you did Seriously, yeah. And then she <laughs> fell over <laughs> sideways. Yeah. It threw me off balance. Unconscious. <laughs> Unconscious shimmy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. I am pleased with the way this worked, and this is going to work well with our paranormal investigations. And the two of us need to meet with Martha and get that scheduled. I'm going to stay in house, but either one of you can go with Martha if you want to. And uh, we just got to get. You asked Luann to go with you. I mean, she has that. That option. <laughs> I don't know if she could, but well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, mean I, I would God. love to do it. I, that sounds great. But if someone else has like no, never like mind, Elizabeth. No, they don't get to go. You only you okay. get to go. I had forgot. I'm sorry. It's okay. I I knew I had told someone they could go, and I forgot. So I'm good with whoever goes. No, you need to go. You you need to go, and I need to keep these two in house because the more in the dark they are, the better they'll perform. And okay. Yes, and that's okay. we talked about that. That is true. The more that we're safety. First, obviously, but the more we're in our own space, we can open up a lot more. Well, I mean, <coughs> go ahead. I, I would like to request no that um, Carrie and Elizabeth <laughs> go back and look at Brenda's interview because I swear I saw a cat. Oh, yeah. Over her left shoulder, kind of in the in the screen. And, and I know she has a cat, but her cat doesn't look like that. So I was just, I watched it and I thought, well, I've got to be seeing things. Okay. So you need to go back and look at it and see what you see. Okay. So here's what's funny. The other day we had a show and you'll remember I turned my mm -hmm. screen off. I did today because I was checking technical stuff. But the other day I turned my screen off and it was just my picture. And it's because I kept seeing a shadow go behind me, behind my screens. It would block the light out. And it did it twice. And it was kind of freaking me out because my door was closed and I didn't hear it open. And I could and I went back and watched it on this the the recording and you can see the shadow going back and forth. And I was telling my husband, like, what's going on? You know, because I've had some things in my house, okay? And he goes, It was him. <laughs> He had snuck in to get something out of the closet and then snuck out. Oh, gee, I just kind of <laughs> ruined all that. I know. I was like, I'm oh, darn. <laughs> like, really? Seriously? <laughs> I was disappointed. <laughs> and was, uh, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, it's going to be something great. Now, I will say one thing that happened during the show with uh, Isaac 
when that cat hopped up there and was looking around, I'm going, what does it yeah. see? What is it looking at? Where's it going? <laughs> you know? So I lost my train of thought on that one. It was like, what are you looking at, cat? Well, you know, none the of, attention was intent. None of my dogs will come in here when we're videotaping. They won't come. They'll come in here when I'm working and stuff. But when we're videotaping, they won't come in. Well, uh, Carrie, doesn't Dolly like to come in when we're... Well, today, because Stan is at work, I have Willow laying on the bed. And she has been out since we started. I think she's maybe shifted one time and Dolly is right up against the door because I can see her fur pushed against the door. But uh, what I'll do is when I get up, when I start walking around is I'll take the dog out and I'll let Dolly come in and she'll just roll around and, and lay in the energy. Well, I get a lot of static electricity yeah. in here and I don't know if it's because I have all the electronics going on at one time or what, but they don't like the static electricity. Yeah, uh, my cat didn't came in before we started. Samantha, and she comes in a lot and hides out until we start, and then she's either up here or down here wanting attention. So, uh -huh. she, uh, well, let me throw something out at y'all before we leave. It was something that uh, Doctor uh, Chuck mentioned last night, which I just cannot believe I forgot all this, but. He, we were talking about thunderstorms and EMF and EMF meters and those kinds of things. And he said, the next time a, a major storm, you know, comes along, turn that on and you'll see it should light up. You, you'll see oh, it do like its test. thing when the storms are coming. So I said, well, I just totally missed it this week. But he said, well, you know, we're supposed to have a chance on Saturday. So if that's the case, if you have your EMF meter, get your EMF meter ready so when the storms come, turn it on and see if you get any, you know, hits, not from the, you know, bolt, but just see if something happens. Because that's what he's talking about with the energy of the ghosties and that, that sort of thing is that EMF meter reads that energy and it should do the same thing with the weather. Uh, the question was, does weather affect ghosts or you or whatever? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes total sense. All right, I congratulate okay. you all. I think we did a great job, great show, great questions, great information. Um, and let me just point out to people, when it looks like we're talking over each other, we are, but it's not because we're rude. It's because there's a lag for us sometimes. And we don't see the other or hear the other person talking till they're already in mid-sentence. But we're basically pretty kind, pretty uh, thoughtful, pretty polite people. I try to be, at least. So, well, we try to anyway. Yeah. So, all right, let's see y'all Monday. Uh, I think it's April next week, April chalk Monday. Is that right? Look at the Pentagon calendar. I, I will verify that. That seems, wow, is that, is it that time already? <laughs> when you're old, time flies, I know. <laughs> well, fun flies when you're doing time. That's <laughs> true. That's true. I would never make it in jail. <laughs> I'd have to, I'd have to prove myself out in the yard every day. It'd just be exhausting. Oh, no. It would just be over. <laughs> I will go. I know we've got five weeks. I think we've got five, uh, five Mondays this time. One, two, three, four. We've got five Mondays. So, yeah, let me just confirm with her that she is for Monday just to make sure. Well, and, if uh, we have an open Monday... Is, uh, if we, we have not have anybody on the we may not have anybody on the thirty first. Well yes we do. So yes we do now. You know who we have? Carrie Glazer. Aside from Carrie? We've never interviewed Sam Carrie. Scientific. We have never oh, interviewed right. Carrie. All right. An interview for Carrie. Carrie. There you go. Carrie, August so uh, the thirty first of August, August which is a Monday. <laughs> August thirtieth. First. 31st. But, yes. but but I'm not making her do this. <laughs> I am. I am. I have I have a feeling if I were to say no, all heck would hit the fan. <laughs> you better believe it, sister. <laughs> oh, don't forget You're Sunday so night, eight o'clock. <laughs> on blogtalkradio.com at Make It So Network. 
Carrie and I will be doing Psychic Sunday, 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 Sunday. I swear. And then to, you can ask your psychic question. I swear to God, it sounds like you're saying naked. It sounds psychic. Like, naked, naked, naked. 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 It sounds like it you said like naked, Sunday, naked, Sunday, naked, Sunday. naked, 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 no. naked. You got to work on your accent. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Elizabeth. All right. I like y'all a little bit no. today. I like y'all better today. Than I like y'all a lot. <laughs> like you a lot. <laughs> Seriously, great show. You did a fantastic job. Deborah. Thank you, Elizabeth. Awesome. It was absolutely fantastic. Seriously, thank you for all your effort and troubles. That was just awesome. Well, we're just going to keep getting better Good and job. better. Thank you. See y'all Monday. Monday, Bye. Monday. Have a great weekend. Y'all too. Bye. Thank y'all a lot. The recording has stopped. Cool. Ah. <sighs>